Hi Hunters, Zook here. With Sunbreak released, I wanted to create a resource video series for the Hunting Horn, kind of a way to give back to the community. There's a lot of information and resources that I feel like we take advantage of, tools and knowledge that others might not have access to, so I just want to document and cover some of these in order to share them with a wider audience. Today we will be covering Hunting Horn's core combos, comparing the differences between raw and elemental Hunting Horn sets, looking at the combos available to us both in performance and echo mode, as well as having a quick high level discussion on sharpness efficiency and infernal gauge buildup. Let's start by looking at what Hunting Horn can actually do with its new and improved combo tree. Now, I do want to warn you, it looks like a lot at first. We have each of our moves available to us, with an indication of N for neutral attack, meaning our left stick is not being moved in any direction, and F for forward attack, meaning our left stick is being pushed forward or directionally. The circular attachments to any move show the button color combination that goes out of the current move we're using, with arrows indicating singular direction only moves. For example, we can't go from crush back into a double swing. If we were to hit XA after crush, it would either be a back slam if we were in neutral, or an overhead smash if we were in a forward position. Now, even after explaining it, this combo tree can still be a lot to take in, but when we really dissect it, we see that it's simply a blend of combo loops, where each combo has a branch or two that can go into different combo loops, but all of these combos are overlaid on one another. Right here, we can see our crush overhead smash chord combo, but after the overhead smash, we can branch into a kick multi crush combo, or a double swing overhead smash combo. Down at the bottom, we are looking at the moves that can combo into and out of Infernal Melody. This part is pretty self-explanatory. If you understand the top half, then you'll understand this. So what do we do with this information? Well, thanks to the hard work of Glass, T-Self, and Gravion, Glass was able to create this. Starting in the center, we have a list of what we would consider the better combos available to us. These include Switch Skill Swap Overhead Smash, Crush Perform or Chord with and without Sonic Waves, Crush Overhead Smash Perform or Chord with and without Sonic Waves, Kick Multi Crush, Kick Multi Crush Overhead Smash. Magnificent Trio with and without follow-up attacks. Slide Beat with and without follow-up attacks. And Earthshaker. Now, by taking frame data on each of these combos and then comparing it to the motion values, elemental modifiers, infernal gauge generated, and sharpness consumed by each of these combos, we can look at the three main segments of this sheet. One for the amount of Infernal Melody Gauge generated per second, one for the amount of Sharpness consumed per second, and finally one for the amount of damage per second across multiple hit zones. So let me show you how to use this sheet. In this example, we will be comparing a Raw Horn set and an Elemental Horn set against Daimyo Hermitar as it is the first monster we fight going into Sunbreak. For our Raw set, I will be using the Fine Kimura Horn with a set using the following skills. In this cell here, we will need to add our total raw with a tech up song multiplied by our sharpness modifier. I will be considering us midway through the hunt with Coalescence Proct and Bloodlust Overcome, providing us with the affinity buff instead of the attack buff. With this, we have a max potential of 95% affinity and crit boost level 3, so a 1.4 times modifier on our critical hits. I have taken the liberty of doing the math for us, and this is what we end up with for our input values. So looking at Meki's monster hit zone value sheet, we know that Daimyo has a 60 blunt hit zone value on its head, so we'll be looking at these two columns for our combos with and without Silkbind Shockwaves active. The Fine Kimura Horn does not have Sonic Waves, so we will also be ignoring the bottom portion of this chart. Without Silkbind Shockwaves active, we can see that our Crush Overhead Smash Chord combo is the highest damage per second option available to us, with only Slide Beat and Earthshaker coming within 5% of that damage. Now obviously Slide Beat is not something you want to spam when the monster is down, but this does go to show how good of a move Slide Beat is during appropriate openings. And Earthshaker is still good because, well, Earthshaker. Once we have Silkbind Shockwaves active, we can see our damage per second increase by about 15%, but we also have new combos that are within the previous 5% damage limit. These being the Kick Multi Crush Overhead Smash combo, and the Overhead Smash Double Swing combo. Do note that the double swing specifically needs to be the counterclockwise spin, as it uses less frames than the clockwise spin. 
We can activate a counterclockwise spin by keeping our left stick in a neutral position after an overhead smash. Now, our best options for RAW under optimal conditions was using Echo Mode, but what about Performance Mode? Well, looking back without Silkbind Shockwaves active, our best options in Performance Mode become Overhead Smash Double Swing Combo, again with the counterclockwise spin. And with Kick Multi Crush Overhead Smash and Crush Overhead Smash Perform being within 5% damage. Once Silkbind Shockwaves is active, we now see that our Kick Multi Crush Overhead Smash combo now does the highest damage per second, with Kick Multi Crush and Overhead Smash Double Swing being within that 5% damage range. The Crush Perform and Crush Overhead Smash Perform combos are no longer within that 5% damage range, but that doesn't mean we ignore these when Silkbind Shockwaves is active. These two combos are still the most sharpness efficient combos with performance mode and they act as great pokes with the ability for us to iframe attacks, something echo mode doesn't have. Simply put, even though the damage per second is lower, the combos still have other benefits to us that can outshine the loss in damage. Also please note that these higher damage combos would ideally be used in perfect situations like when the monster is downed, but not consistently throughout the fight. Referring back to Taxman's Hunting Horde Battle Dance series, we are still a very reaction based weapon, so we want to position and react first so that we can then deal damage in order to poke for openings that we can further capitalize on. Okay, so let's move on to Elemental Hunting Horn. For our Elemental set, I will be using the Abyssal Storm Horn with a set using the following skills. Again, I will be considering this midway through the hunt with Coalescence Proct and Bloodless Overcome, providing us the Affinity buff instead of the Attack buff. For this horn, I have also included the Attack Up buff from us using Bead of Resonance. I have taken the liberty of doing the math for us, and this is what we end up with for our input values. Again, we will be comparing it against Daimyo Hermitar with a 60 Blunt Head Hit Zone value, and a 35 Thunder Elemental Hit Zone value. The Abyssal Storm Horn does not have Sonic Waves, so again we will be ignoring the bottom portion of this sheet. Now without Silkbind Shockwaves active, our highest damage combo is Kick Multi Crush, with Overhead Smash Kick Multi Crush, Crush Multi Crush Chord, Crush Chord, Crush Multi Crush Overhead Smash Chord, Crush Overhead Smash Chord, all falling within 5% damage of our highest combo. However, once Silkbind Shockwave is active, which for Elemental Hunting Horn we should be aiming for near 100% uptime, our Kick Multi Crush combo increases in damage per second by nearly 220%. At this point it becomes an outlier with no other combo getting close to its damage. Our 5 previous combo options are sitting around 10-20% less damage per second. And while this does seem like Kick Multi Crush is a great option for us on paper, the use case is actually really small and the main driving point for our next topic. Let's look back over to the left side of our sheet for a second. Earlier I had mentioned columns for Infernal Melody Gauge Generated Per Second and Sharpness Units Consumed Per Second. Now, while the Kick Multi Crush combo has the highest damage per second interval on our theoretical matchup, it also has the lowest sharpness efficiency out of all of our highlighted moves, costing us 1.52 units per second, as well as the lowest damage per sharpness used. For reference, if we were to down a monster in the Swamp of the Citadel, the monster would be down for 15 seconds, allowing us to use the Kick Multi Crush combo roughly 6 times at the cost of 24 units of sharpness. Let me say that again, 24 units. Now, most Elemental Hunting Horn sets are already hard pressed to maintain their purple sharpness, if they have any, and a single monster down could end up costing us the majority of any purple sharpness we have. Burning through that much purple sharpness will end up being a detriment to our damage in the long run. And in reality, there's only two situations that I can think of in which we would want to use the Kick Multi Crush combo. The first is if we have Protective Polish active and sharpness loss is no longer an issue during the skill's uptime. And the second is the Valstrax Hunting Horn, where sharpness is not an issue because we have more white sharpness than we know what to do with. The easier option is by sacrificing damage, we can shift to moves that include our chord or performance in order to greatly increase our sharpness efficiency. In our Elemental Hunting Horn example, by choosing our Crush Chord combo at the detriment to roughly 18% damage per second, we instead change our sharpness cost down to 0.62 units per second. In that same theoretical situation in the Citadel Swamp, those 15 seconds would only cost us 10 units instead of 24 units, a 58% decrease in sharpness consumed. So while there might be a combo that has the highest damage per second, like Kick Multi Crush, it may not be the best option available to us. 
Every single combo needs to be considered on a case-by-case -case basis with the monster matchup, weapon, and set details also taken into consideration. Additionally, I just want to have a quick discussion on Infernal Melody efficiency. This will be independent from sets because gauge generation is a static value for our combos. I have added a third column that I want to look at and this is gauge generated per sharpness cost. And I just want to point out that the combos that are great for sharpness efficiency are also great for generating gauge, and that together they maintain a great gauge generated per sharpness cost ratio. A majority of this is due to our performance cord attacks because shockwaves don't cost sharpness and they also build up the most gauge. So wrapping this all up, what can we say? Well, to conclude, we want to maintain a high uptime of Silkbind Shockwaves. The buffs we receive in both raw and elemental playstyles are fantastic. With optimal situations and notably very specific conditions, we can see that our better damage combos include Kick Multi Crush, Kick Multi Crush Overhead Smash, Overhead Smash Double Swing, Crush Performer Chord, Crush Overhead Smash Performer Chord, and Crush Multi Crush Chord. Then, when under non-optimal conditions or if our Infernal Melody gauge is not full, we will want to use combos like Crush Perform Chord and Crush Overhead Smash Perform Chord. And again, all this data will need to be looked at under a wider scope. You should not be using the spreadsheet to simply look for the largest numbers and spam that combo. The monster, the set, the weapon, the conditions, and the matchup will all change what we want to be doing throughout any given hunt. But I do hope that my theoretical situations help give you an understanding of how to use this spreadsheet for yourself and that you do find some use in it. Hi everyone! I just want to give a massive shout out to Glass, T-Self, and Gravion for their hard work, especially Glass for compiling data and creating this resource for us. I also want to say a huge thanks to Aerodoxus for their insanely amazing hunting horn weapon cards. Aerodoxus has been making some amazing hunting horn content on their channel, covering the sounds of hunting horns across all generations of Monster Hunter, and some of the spin-off games like Stories and Stories 2, as well as helping out with larger projects like Bake's Melody Origins video. I have left a link to Aerodoxus's channel in the video description below, so make sure to check them out. Now, if you want to learn more about the hunting horn, if you want to get better at Monster Hunter, or if you just want to hang out and chat with some really cool people, I recommend joining Amadeus225's server The Horn Pub. I've included a link in the description, and as always, don't forget to like and subscribe for more hunting horn related content and speedruns. And thank you for watching.